Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Here's the recap for year 19 of Thrill of the Grill, my solo Wily World over on Twitch. At the top of autumn, I suffer a complete nervous breakdown. The source of this anxiety is the geckos. Every time I open the entryway, they run into it and start hugging the outer door. I can't move them away. And if I push towards them, they glitch straight out of the pen. So. We need a solution, and now seems like the best time to tackle the problem. The first thing I'm trying out is to expand the pen towards the back, with a couple of signs fit between the walls. The idea is that geckos will not recognize signs as impassable, so they'll think they can escape through it and just start hugging the back side of the pen when I come in. I'm also putting some glass castles behind the signs to minimize the chances of geckos actually glitching through the signs. The problem with this setup is that the geckos just run into the back room and fall asleep, so they're not going to be constantly startled by Chester. I could put up another layer of signs to block access to the back room, but if a gecko glitches through the sign, then I'll have to demolish stuff to get it back out. I don't, it doesn't seem worth the trouble. Idea number two, we're gonna demolish the back room and just replace the back wall of the pen with two layers of castles and an outer layer of fossils. That's three layers of obstacles that the geckos think they can get through but can't. I'm gonna keep it like this for now while we just wait a few days and just see what happens. I'm doing the annual Berger tree harvest and this time I'm actually using weather panes. This is definitely gonna save time and damage to Berger whenever poison birch nut trees pop. A few viewers have asked why I go through the trouble of protecting Berger. Why not just kill him off when I'm done farming wood for the season? First of all, if I don't want to farm wood, then it's nice to not have to deal with him every autumn. But if he dies during a harvest, then I'm left with chopping the rest of the trees by hand. But you know, the main reason is that sometimes he spawns later in the season and there's just a very small window of opportunity for harvesting tall birch nut trees in autumn before they lose their foliage. So keeping him alive just ensures that he's available to use as soon as the trees are ready. I spent a few days on the lunar island catching moon moths and making some bath bombs to drop in the hot springs and back home I'm lining the entryway to the bee park with the planted trees. You can feed veggies to moon moths to keep them alive in your inventory and stone fruit is usually the most accessible veggie on the lunar island. Then I was in mosaic biome mining some moon rock when I went on a hunt and discovered a varg. At that moment, I looked into his eyes as he sank his teeth into that stupid deer. I made a decision. I'm going to build a moon rock farm. So this will be the first of many vargs. I'm going to leave it chilling in the back of the mosaic for now, but shh, shh, shh. But later. Beginning of winter, I'm back harvesting barnacles at the seaweeds, and I finally get to hold a sunfish for heat during winter. Live fish will restore their spoilage time inside a tin bin, and the rate is about a third of their normal spoilage time. I think this means if I hold a fish in my inventory for half a day, then it'll take one and a half days in the bin to restore them fully. So if I want to constantly have a sunfish in my inventory, then I would need to cycle four to five total sunfish in and out of the bin. It might be more practical to just keep one or two in the bin and hold one when we get cold to raise our temperature. Then we could just throw on a beefalo hat or tam and put the fish back in the bin. Day 1282, we sail home to discover that the majority of geckos have glitched out of the pen. I was half expecting this because of the order that structures and mobs load, but it was still amazing to see so many geckos magically pass through not one, not two, but three layers of obstacles. I will revisit this eventually, but for the moment, I'm seriously considering just telepoofing inside to pick grass in the future because this is becoming a major headache. But before we get to that, I want to revisit the ruins this season. There's a pseudoscience station in a branch of the ruins that is much safer to access than the set piece. It only has one nightmare light nearby, so crafting during the nightmare phase will be much less dangerous. I have the option of wearing a bone helm around the set piece station during nightmare phase, but I'm a little hesitant to do that. Even if the nightmare creatures are neutral, I I know that it is just a matter of time before I accidentally hit one, and that could be instantly fatal if I'm surrounded by terror beaks. Also, I like the idea of using the nightmare phase as an opportunity to restore sanity with the Bee Queen crown. Since unloading nightmares has been patched out, being constantly insane in the ruins has been a lot more of a perpetual nuisance. So if I have opportunities to not go completely insane, I'll take them. But aside from the practical reasons for moving away from the set piece, this new station just has a more open feel to it, and there's lots of building potential in the surrounding area. 
I don't know, I always feel so constricted at the set piece. For all these reasons, I'm setting up some labeled chests and moving everything on over here. I'm feeling pretty good about the move, just curious if the clockworks are going to destroy any of the chests the next time we reset the ruins. I'll probably bring a pan flute down next time if we need to move their spawn locations. Back on the surface for Klaus, the loot is a mandrake and wax. I'm also doing my annual winter cooking, starting with meaty stew. My favorite recipe for this one is monster meat, one leafy meat, and two small meat. If I'm good with preserving meat from hound waves, I can end up with a lot of drumsticks from the vultures. And this year, I'm restoring an entire stack of meaty stew without having to dip into my large meat supply that much at all. I wanted to make some fruit crepes with this butter sitting in the fridge, but the only fruit I had on hand was glowberries. Crepes have the same crockpot priority as mousse, so if I use glowberries as fruit, then I have a 50-50 chance of cooking either dish. I decided to just gamble with the butter since I wouldn't be growing any fruits until spring. RNG strikes again. I'm kicking myself for not grabbing a few bananas from the caves. So I'm back working some more on the gecko pen. This time, there was the suggestion to install side doors in the corridor. The idea was that if a gecko is running from Chester, then the end of the corridor would be the furthest point away, so they'd be less likely to get stuck on a side door that's a little bit closer. Plus, I can have options for escaping if one door is getting blocked. But since this pen is so small, there's actually another adjustment we're going to make moving Chester into the corridor. If I leave him right outside the door, then he seems to keep spooking most of the geckos inside, and even if they go to the other side, eventually they'll just wander closer and get spooked again. This seems beneficial because when I want to harvest, I can just move Chester all the way outside, and the geckos won't be trying to keep away from him while I'm inside. We'll go with this setup for now and see if it sticks. And now it is year of the beefalo, which is going to consume my activity for the rest of the year. First thing I want to do is grab the clean sweeper and go on a little tour of the base. This event added wall and fence skins, including a moon rock wall skin, which is really making me itch for a moon rock farm. Check out this new umbrella skin. With Warley glowing, the traveling Victorian lamp look is complete. I appreciate how different wall skins look more completed at different stages, and this new wall skin actually looks really good when we upgrade them once. The only other wall skin that does this for me is the default one, so this will add some very nice building options. Now, I want to get around to messing with the beefalo event, so I set up a shrine and a few of the basic structures at a beefalo herd in the savanna. The most important item that this event adds to the game is the bell which can be used to bond a beefalo to you. You can then hitch them to a stage set up close to a judge's booth. But first we need to dress up the cow at a grooming station. At first we just have one outfit set, but as we do the contest and earn more scraps, we can weave at the sewing station and unlock more outfits. We got a hound wave just as we started up the pageant and I ran for the nearby cave entrance. And guess what? The bonded beefalo follows you into the cave. Holy god, we have cave beefalo now. This is game changing for so many reasons, and I'm blown away that they would add such an impactful game mechanic during a limited time event. I hope they're not going to make us activate the event in the future just to craft the bell, because this is going to be something that every beefalo tamer is going to want from now on. There will definitely be some new cave boss strategies coming down the pipeline, and beefalo riding in the ruins is going to be hilarious. But to me, the biggest advantage to a cave cow is going to be mapping out the caves. By default, the cave system is massive and can take well over a single season to discover all the biomes. But on a beefalo, that's going to cut travel time significantly, and it'll probably become a part of Fuel Weaver speedruns because finding the atrium can be a really big time sink. Meanwhile, I am failing at starting the contest. The issue is that when the judge spawns in ringer contestants, the beefalo and heat start attacking their owners and the event just ends. I tried putting four of my own beefalo onto the stages, but the game just crashed. So until these bugs get patched, which they eventually did, I need at least one ringer during the event. So this means we can't do the event during spring. Of course the event would go live during spring. Well, this was a fun experiment. <laughs> I'm just going to dismantle this whole setup and spend the rest of spring building a dedicated set piece back in our base. I'm picking a plot of land to the right of my gecko pen. 
and this will give me an opportunity to observe the new gecko setup. The auto vault goat pen will need to be moved, so I'm cleaning it up and picking a new spot closer to the water. I'm also going to dig the anemone so that the next vault goat stays alive and I can move it into the other pen. By day 1311, the contest build is pretty much set up with four stages surrounding a judge's booth. And check it out, the gecko pen seems to be producing with Chester placed right outside. Of course, the best solution would be the simplest one. Next time, I think I can make the pen a little bit larger. I think that will reduce future gecko headaches. And now we have a new goat spawned in the pen, so we're gonna grant him about half a minute of freedom before freezing and nudging him into his new one tile prison. The safety goat seems to be trying to get to the new herd location, so I'm assuming all is well and I can demolish this old pen. If we get more random goats spawned around here soon, then we'll all know that I messed up. Last day of spring, I did a hunt in the rain, hoping for that final goat to complete the four herds. It was looking hopeful too, the trail took me all the way to the back of the oasis, but then it turned straight back towards the front. The final track spawned a koala just outside of the desert. I felt a little ripped off, but don't worry, we're gonna have many more hunting woes soon enough. Okay, time to start bonding some beefalo and moving them to the desert. I'm gonna name the beauty cows after my favorite streamers and YouTubers. The first contestant will be Rovine. The second will be Glurmuz. The third will be Demon Reboof. And the final contestant will be James Boofit. And then I remembered we can only have three of our own contestants if we don't want to crash the game, so unfortunately Mr. Boofit has to go. I unbonded him outside the desert, but he started walking back towards the stage. We can't have this, so I'm sorry James, but you can't win them all. And the Ghost of the Betrayed floated straight over to my pig farm and triggered a smoldering event on a fence placed just outside of the pig farm, sending half of the build up in flames. This was so inevitable. I built this farm way too close to the edge. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Why did I do it? I've got an idea for future fireproofing our builds close to here that doesn't involve lining the entire desert in flingos. So we're finally getting some contests in. Basically, you dress up your beeflo in a variety of costumes that give each contestant different qualities. At the start of the contest, the judge says what he's looking for, and if you can guess the beeflo he's describing, then you win some lucky coins. Even if you lose, you get scraps, which can be placed in different combinations in the sewing machine, and the costume patterns that pop out can be used to unlock all of the nine different beeflo outfits. For me, the only worthwhile crafting recipes in the offerings tab for this event is the bell and the beeflo figure sketch. Everything else is just party favors, but the beefalo costumes are the real event prizes. I think they're amazing, and it's really nice to get a variety of potential looks for domesticated beefalo. This event was basically the beefalo quality of life update. Now, we can bring beefalo into caves and through wormholes. We can even pick items while riding. But we also got nine brand new customizable outfits completely for free. I've never been much of a beefalo tamer, but this event is inspiring me in a big way. Anyway, that's it for year 19. Next year, we're gonna build the Moon Rock Farm. This project is long overdue, but at this point, we have the resources and the time to build it right and big. Hope you're enjoying the recaps and hope to catch you live next time over on Twitch. Take care. This year recap is going to be dedicated to the beefalo. I know it's going to be a five minute video all about dressing up beefalo.